Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of Bat Friday. We've created our own holiday uh, solely around uh, Batman and here to uh, talk about the art of the bat. Over the next hour, we're going to be sitting down with two amazing, two of the top names in uh, DC art and here to introduce and uh, chat with these people is one of my all time favorite people. You know her from uh, obviously Collider Heroes, the DC uh, what is it, the DC show? DC Daily. DC Daily, man. And of course, your own YouTube presence and your massive Twitch presence. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Bat Friday is such a good idea. You all have such amazing things lined up today. I'm really psyched to be a part of it. And I cannot wait to learn from these two folks that you're about to introduce. Great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and step aside and let you talk some serious art with some serious artists, guys. We'll see you a little bit later on in Bat Friday. <laughs> All right, I am very excited. We are going to be about to talk to two fabulous artists and you get to ask them your questions. That'll be in the second half of the panel. But first, the very talented, the very terrifying, the uh, co-author of Batman Three Jokers. Please welcome Jason Fabok. <laughs> Hey, hi. How's it going? <laughs> and from brightest day to the dark night, please welcome David Finch. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm so thrilled you both could join us today. First of all, how is your Bat Friday going? Dave, you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> I, I stayed up too late last night, so and my wife makes me wake up with the dog every morning. So I was up bright and early. We walked the dog. I came back and I fell asleep for, you know, till one. <laughs> so that was my day. But I got work done after that. So. A good nap day is a, a good, good foundation. Day. And we're in Canada here, so it's not really a holiday. Is it? Is it actually Thanksgiving today? It was yesterday, yesterday. for uh, here in America. Okay. But I'm curious, have we infected the rest of the world with sort of shopping mania on this day? Is that a thing in other places or is that an American thing? Would you know that, Jake? Does Black Friday mean anything to y'all? Oh, uh, yeah, it's it's become more popular. <laughs> is it? Okay, yeah, I, I don't shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we, like my wife and I, we, we pretty much have had everything bought for the kids like for the last month and a half. So today we just kind of cleaned up on a couple extra little online deals and then that was about it. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm so glad that you both could join us as we take that uh, dubious holiday of, uh, yeah, Dennis Gabriel is right, woo! Uh, two amazing Batman artists. As we take the dubious holiday of Black Friday and convert it into the much comic book preferred Bat Friday, I'm so glad you both could join us. Uh, and let's start with a nice, easy one. What's so great about Batman? Dave, I'm gonna make you go first. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I have so many favorite Batman artists that are all really, uh, okay, they're all similar in the sense that they're all very dark, which is my favorite. I love darker kind of artists, but Kelly Jones had a really creepy kind of horror Batman with the cape, and I, I loved that look, and I, I tried to do that as much as I could in, in my own Batman, but it's tough. He's, you know, some artists just have their own genius. It's hard to emulate. I love Jim Lee's much more superheroic, bigger than life, you know, and they're really kind of different characters, but Batman is the kind of character that can kind of withstand that. He's got the greatest villains in the world. He's got the greatest city in the world, you know, and it's really interpretable. And I, I've seen, um, is it, what was the comic? It was Batman 1963. I'm going to say it wrong, but it's a classic, you know, kind of based on the show. The and 66 it's so comics? That's right. Yes, yes. And, uh, and it's still it's still Batman. It's still cool. So, yeah, Bruce Tim. Hmm. So, uh, accommodating all of these different iconic versions. What about you, Jason? Um, <clears throat> I always loved Batman because he was the opposite of what I am in life. Like, <laughs> I, I would I would probably like more relate more to like Superman and the way that he thinks, the way that he acts. Whereas Batman was my escapist kind of fantasy to be that big, tough, kind of masculine, macho kind of dude who's not afraid to go out at night and just beat up criminals. Uh, you know, he had the cool costume. Um, you know, one of my first introductions to Batman was the Michael Keaton Batman. And so, 
like that was a very specific vision of of Batman where you know he just walked it like I didn't realize when he was a kid that he couldn't actually move his neck you know because <laughs> of the way so I just thought Batman was so tough that he would just move like his whole shoulder you know like he was just always flexing and he doesn't and, need and, peripheral vision yeah He's he doesn't need up. it like, because he knew where everybody was at all times right so I don't know. Like I, I, he's always been my favorite character, my favorite superhero. I've always been most attracted to him as a character, uh, and he's the character I also find the most um, natural to draw. Like I struggle with Superman. Like Dave, I don't know if you have this. Like I, I cannot, I cannot get Superman the way I want him in my mind like i can't put it down on paper because like you can't use the same kind of shadows and stuff as you can with batman and and it just doesn't look right i just yeah i just do it that way i can't help it i i i I do it too but i don't know like i i I always just struggled with superman batman always just comes really natural to me and so um and like like what dave said he's got the best villains you can play with the city you can play with the visuals the shadows and all that stuff and yeah. just makes for a good fun time drawing comics well i have to ask this follow-up dave what is the secret to superman oh so i don't know <laughs> i will say <laughs> if i draw superman and i've done it a, a few times um i it reminds me, I, I took over Avengers, and this is a long time ago, in 2005. You know, wonderful. And Avengers, it was, it was a very light kind of a comic, and it always had been. And I can't draw that way, so I just did it the way that I did it, and it ended up being a different thing. And I know a lot of fans were upset at the time, but in the end, I think it <laughs> worked. And my Superman, yeah, it's it's a darker character. It's all I can do. So so you can the secret of Superman is putting him under a tree that casts a lot of shadows. That's right. Yeah. Or, you know, direct sunlight. That's a lot of shadow you get from, from good hearts. You do. Yeah. So. I want to ask because folks watching this will probably be aware of both of you as excellent artists with a lot to contribute, but they might not be aware uh, that much like the bat we are discussing, there is a bit of a mentorship history here. Could you talk a little bit, Jay, about getting into comics and what someone else on this call might have to do with that? <laughs> well, I, I owe my entire career to Dave and Meredith <laughs> Finch. I, I owe, we owe a lot to them. And uh, when I was, I don't know, I don't even know how old I was at the time. Maybe I was 24. Uh, this was back in 2010. So uh, I had sent I had sent my portfolio to Dave and asked him if he could uh, uh, give me a couple pointers, uh, seeing that we lived close. We live about um, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes away, depending on the drive. And so I didn't expect to really get a, a response back, but you know, he said, Hey, why don't you come by, bring your portfolio and, and I'll give you a couple pointers. And so I went over to his house and, and that began a six month kind of boot camp. <laughs> I call it like a comic book boot camp because I would go over every couple days. Dave would, uh, give me a, a kind of an assignment. We're going to draw heads. We're going to draw hands. We're going to draw feet. Uh, much like uh, what Dave's been doing on his YouTube channel, um, mm-hmm. a lot of that, a lot of that stuff that he's been doing on the YouTube channel was stuff that I was learning from him directly. And so then I would go home and and I would work so hard. I would try to if he told me to draw one page of heads, I'd come back with two or three. You know, yeah. uh, draw 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 a city. I would come back with two or three pages of city because I really wanted to prove to him that I wanted it. I really wanted this opportunity, and so that went on for like I said about six months. And then uh, at the time you were working, you had just come over to DC and you were doing a lot of covers, and so there wasn't much in the way of doing pencil assists and stuff. And um, and so you said, hey, let's just send in your portfolio. Let's do a little portfolio piece, seven page portfolio um of a of a batman story and then uh, no, just... I, 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 I said three pages you did seven <laughs> 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 oh well there you go so anyway so we 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 uh, but he sent in that portfolio to dc and they offered me a job and then uh from there it was kind of you know uh here and there it was a little bit of spotty work i wasn't getting tons of work but then again dave came through and asked me if i wanted to uh uh, help him out on the Batman, the Dark Knight series. And so I came in and I did that. And then that kind of helped springboard me into a, into the the career I have right now. And so, um, yeah, I'm very thankful to Dave for that, for that. And, 
And, uh, you know, even to this day, he, uh, sometimes I still email him and say like, I can't get this head or I can't get this pose. Can you help me out here? And, and uh, I even, I went over to his place uh, about a month and a half ago asking him, do you have any reference or, or some tips on drawing nature and trees and, and forests and all this kind of stuff. And so he, he gave me some pointers and some books to check out. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, what is, sorry. What, what does your side of the story sound like? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I helped, you know, but uh, also in six months is ridiculously short. He was already very uh, far along and, and it was it was kind of a pleasure to help because I could see that everything was there, you know, and there were things that he needed to work on. And, you know, and I've learned that you never know. I can try and help and I can do my very best. But if somebody uh, won't respond positively, I can't help. And uh, he did. I mean, you know, more than uh, I could have possibly expected. Obviously, you know, I was getting twice the work. And the great thing was, it, he'd come back, and not only he would have done twice as much as what I've, what I asked, but in the first part, I could see where he's struggling, and then I could see where he's figuring it, figuring it out himself. And then, you know, even moving beyond what I was showing him, it happened really fast. And uh, as far as I'm getting work at DC, I have to say, it was not hard they were really impressed with his work right away and and uh working in comics it's a it's a big commitment it's a lot of responsibility and it's you have to always be learning and it's very competitive in the fact that jay's managed to uh have such a huge career i mean you know three jokers that's it's done okay from what i'm hearing <laughs> so i've heard a couple of things about that yeah i, I feel like yeah yeah you're, you're coming over to ask about trees and meanwhile you're kicking my butt <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but I uh, uh, appreciate that. <laughs> and what you're seeing right now is three absolutely gorgeous covers from Batman Three Jokers. Jay, can you talk a little bit about that project, what it's been like to see it finally reach the audience, how you feel about it all being out there in the world and now in a beautiful collection? Yeah, that uh, it's 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 really been something uh, exciting to see it all kind of, uh, all come out and, and the fan response and the hardcover just came out. I think it was probably the fastest turnaround of a hardcover ever for DC. The <laughs> third, third issue came out when in October and then the hardcover's out in November. So, uh, you know, it was very, very quick turnaround, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, a lot of years of preparation and, uh, and, and uh, it was a good two and a half years of work with Jeff Johns, uh, him and him and I, you know, we had this story that we wanted to tell and uh, we were really uh, confident in the story that we had. And, and especially with the ending that we had, we were really excited to tell that tale. And uh, we knew that we had something that was going to feel both classic and modern at the same time and uh, we had the time and that was another thing that was really attractive about the project is that i had time and uh i could put my all into the work and and i really you know i it was really a passion project for me and um i spent a lot of a lot of time drawing panels redrawing panels drawing redrawing pages uh covers I mean, those covers there are the final versions. I probably did like two or three of each of those prior to that, that I just didn't like and uh, ended up, you know, just going, no. And we, we may have Jay coming in and out as we go. Um. <laughs> He's still, still frozen. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> you know, we'll take these trade-offs for the ability to do panels like this with people all yeah. over the world, you know? This, this Oh, it's, it's too bad. I was, I was enjoying the... <laughs> my back? <laughs> You're back. You're back. Right. Sorry. I'm in my basement where we don't have a wired connection. I only have a, a Wi-Fi, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, wireless Wi-Fi. So it might, it might freeze up. So. Well, we're glad you can be here with us. You were talking about different versions and working towards uh, the yeah, final product. Yeah, like those covers are the last version of probably like three or four takes on those covers. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. It was it was a lot of fun and, and a lot of hard work, a lot of battles behind the scenes <laughs> to, to get things out the way we wanted them to get out and when we wanted them to get out. But it seemed everything worked out in the end. And that was something that Jeff and I kept saying to each other 
there was a lot of setbacks and there were a lot of things that were kind of happening behind the scenes. And I, we kept saying to each other, you know, it, it's, it, it'll come out when it's meant to come out. It, it'll happen when it's meant to happen. It, all things happen for a reason. There's reasons why there's de delays on these things. And, but when it came out, it came out big and it sold very well. And uh, I think it helped out a lot of comic shops right at the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, when thing, when businesses were kind of coming back in, it helped out a lot of co like the local comic shops here in Windsor. They told me that they, they were selling out. Of, they sold out of every copy. Each one had ordered like, you know, three or 400 copies of the book. So they were selling out of everything. So people were hungry for it. And uh, I felt it was something that the comic book uh, stores really needed. It was a big boost for them. And so, I'm very proud of the book and um, happy with the work that we did and I'm um, glad that people are getting a chance to read it and hopefully more people get to read it over a Christmas holiday with the you know, book on sale now and hardcover, so yeah. I, I think uh, that very fast time you talked about for the hardcover should uh, pay off for the gift givers and receivers of the comic book world yeah, right around sure. now. <laughs> um, sure. The kind of book that we'll be doing that for years, you know, some books just uh, have enough of an impact that they, they last for, you know, years and years. And I think that's going to be one. I felt that way when when you first mentioned it, Jason, you said, you know, you're going to do this book with Jeff Johns. You kind of gave me a. Oh, uh, David, we that's lost the... your sound just for a moment there. Um, you said we... that you felt that way right at the start. And then we just lost you for a second. Um... Oh, I'm cutting out too. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, yeah, I, I just, I think it's a book that, you know, people will be buying and it's going to be available in bookstores nonstop for years. So. Yeah. Have you ever been surprised, David, uh, by a work having a, a, a very long tail or that you, you know, you thought maybe had slipped under the radar, but people still bring up to you? Yeah. yeah. Or have you always known for a fact, like this is the one that people will ask about forever? You know, I, I never know, actually. There's, there's really no way of, of knowing. I, I, I think Avengers, I, I felt like a, I was pretty confident that would do well. And then they came out with the movies and, you know, I thought, okay, well, that one should be around for a little while. Uh, I still see a lot of Moon Knight, which is a surprise. And it's great. You know, I'm a huge Moon Knight fan. I loved working on that book. I figured no one would buy it and no one would remember it. So seeing that is is great. And, you know, Batman, great thing about doing Batman is not only is it so much fun to draw, but it has such a big audience and a dedicated audience. So, you know, when you draw Batman, um, it's something that people will remember for a while. Now, Jay had mentioned that he might've been introduced with Batman with Michael Keaton. David, do you remember your first memories of Batman? Wow. Um, when did you meet the bat? I, you know, I don't remember a time not, being aware of Batman, so it's a little tough to say. So I, I kind of want to say maybe the cartoon from the, the 60s, but I don't know if that's actually right, and I'm just saying that, really. I, I just don't remember not being aware of Batman. Very cool. When did you know comic books were going to be the thing for you? Uh, wow. <laughs> so I, I, um, I'm a high school dropout, um, and I actually, I, my parents forced me to go back a few times and it just, it didn't work. I did not want to go back to school. I wanted to find something that I could do with no education and that I enjoyed. And uh, I mean, that seemed like an impossible task. And uh, I was really looking at having to go back to school in some kind of form or other. And my sister read comics uh, and I finally gave one a chance. I was 20. So they were around the house. I just never tried them. Wait, you know? I want to hear that story. She She's was into a, comics and trying to get you to. I've I've oh no. given my brother so many comics, uh, and was, it did work eventually. <laughs> but she was not trying to get me into comics. She wanted me away from her stuff. So <laughs> yeah, I had to steal her comics to read them. And when I started, she was not happy. So yeah, she read uh, Excalibur. It's uh, Alan Davis. Mm -hmm. I'm still a huge fan. She had the John Byrne X Men stuff, and and actually Mark Silvestri's X Men run, and that actually was, Mark Silvestri is my teacher, and. Uh, my favorite artist for years, you know, he was my boss for seven years. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's the stuff that, that got me into it. And, um, it was a bit of a started. I thought, Hey, why not? You know, I had nothing to lose. And the minute I started, it just felt right. And I had a long way to go longer than I knew, but it felt right. So I just kept going. 
Uh, at what point did you know I, I that that well I'll, actually I'm going to save that one until we maybe get Jay back because I'm very curious whether uh, you already knew that you might like to pass on those skills by the time you were working with him but I'd rather put him on the spot when we get him back. Um, <laughs> uh, I am curious for you like what makes the medium of comics not just to work in but to consume special compared to other sorts of storytelling. Um, it, it's not like books in the sense that. With books, you get a lot more um, exposition, you know, whereas with comics, it's more like a movie, except that because you only have still images, so much of the work is done by the reader and you have to fill that in. And the better an artist is at hitting those key moments, the easier it is for a reader to be able to fill those gaps, which is why uh, great storytellers um are, are so popular because people can really just lose themselves in a story. And that's what I love about reading the best comics out there. Who are some of the greats that people should look to? We talked about Kelly Jones, obviously, but who inspires you as an artist? Uh, right now, my biggest inspirations, I would say, are uh, Jorge Jimenez, who is drawing Batman right now, and I think is incredible. Uh, Sean Murphy, also drawing Batman. You know what? I'm not saying because they're drawing Batman, but Sean Gordon Murphy is an absolute genius and uh, his stuff is very inspiring to me. Uh, Jay, his work, obviously, I'm a massive fan of. I can't believe how great it is. Um, <laughs> uh, Greg Capullo. I'm naming all Batman artists right now. This is terrible. <laughs> but, you know, uh, yeah, those are a lot of the artists that I'm, I'm really looking at right now. Uh, as far as artists that that really got me into wanting to draw, it was Mark Silvestri, all the image guys, Jim Lee, another Batman artist. Tom <laughs> McFarlane. <laughs> he, he, actually, he did draw Batman. There was a little bit. Um, uh, Simon Bisley, who is like a really mm. muscular, crazy, you know, did a lot of painting. I still, every once in a while, I try and paint. I love doing it. I'm just I'm terrible at it, so... One day I'll retire and I'll just paint, like Simon Bisley, <laughs> if I can. In terms of expanding the kind of things that you took on, at what point did you think you might want to write as well as draw? Uh, you know what? I love to read. So I foolishly thought that that would mean that I would love to write. Yeah. What did you learn? <laughs> Writing is a really, really hard job, I found. And I, I've written a few things. And then, you know, you do the job and, and you realize how terrible it is. And then you forget. And then you do it again. Um, writing Batman was was the last for me. I got a lot of help, actually, from Meredith because the wheels really came off. I, I lost. I was writing the book and drawing it. The book to draw was taking me more time than I already had. And just that mental shift. And when you're writing, when I'm drawing, I watch TV. I watch, you know, movies, I listen to music, whatever. When you're writing, you really need it quiet and to just concentrate. And that is so mentally taxing for me. So uh, I don't think it's something I would do again. I have a huge amount of respect for writers that especially after uh, a few experiences trying it, you know, but yeah, I, I prefer to do the artwork and let the writers do the writing. That's fascinating because I've heard a lot of writers talk about how intimidating what you all do is because you're doing, you know, 75 out of 80 of the jobs of filmmaking uh, to go with the other five. And I haven't heard many artists sort of say like, well, that seemed that that was su surprisingly challenging. Uh, but where do you feel what, what are your favorite parts of those many hats that you wear as an artist? Do you love the action, the emotion, the environments or all of it? Uh my favorite really is, I love the action, I really do, but my favorite is is the drama. And so it's the it's the shot right before the big action. It's the shot when somebody turns around and there's the huge villain, it's a double page spread and they realize that they're in trouble. And it's that, you know, impending doom that's always my favorite kind of shot to do. Impending doom is a very specific mood. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good name for a comic, impending doom. Absolutely. <laughs> and on the next page, doom. Uh, I am very curious, uh, how have you felt, speaking of Like Three Jokers, a long sort of gestating project, how have you felt about watching a certain Bat-Cat relationship uh, come into being and evolve and, evolve, and you're going to be contributing at, uh, at least one cover to the upcoming Batman-Catwoman, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, one, as far as I know. Uh, as far as I know, one. 
<laughs> but yeah, it's it's been amazing to see. Um, I, I did uh, artwork for the the book. Actually, I, I drew Batman proposing to Catwoman. Yes, which when was you a surprise. Drama, I, <laughs> I got the script and um, I started drawing it, and I was actually a decent ways into it before. I always read the entire script before I start. I just feel like it's a, it's a better way to approach it, so you actually have an idea of where the writer's trying to go instead of just page by page boxing yourself into a corner. So. Uh, yeah, I read the whole thing, did not cross my mind. I'm like, oh, okay. And then he proposed, I don't know what I was thinking, you know, and yeah, halfway through, I realized, wait a minute, did he just propose to her, you know? So, and then you're yeah, watching everything fall apart and seeing how things have developed. It's It's been very interesting. Do you feel a personal stake in uh, those kids working it out? Yeah, it, well, of course, you know, <laughs> yeah, this, this is a great thing about, uh, about the best fiction, you know, you, um, you put yourself in the characters and you want to see them win. You know, I remember I used to read Charlie Brown when I was a kid, the, the comic strip, and I would get so bad at Lucy because she would pull the ball away from, from Charlie Brown. And be like, no, you know, and I wanted to go in there and rescue him, you know? So yeah, of course, I'd love to see them work it out and live happily ever after. I don't know that it's going to happen. That can, Batman cannot live happily ever after. It's just not in the cards. Batman and Charlie Brown may have more in common than I've ever considered before. When you look at it that way. <laughs> Uh, I am curious what, so if you get, for instance, an assignment like, oh, guess what? Batman's going to propose. People are probably going to remember this one. What goes through your mind as you approach? All right. How do I want this page to come out? Um, you know, I, I think I still approach it the same way, really. Uh, I, in the script, uh, it, it had the actual proposal page was a splash page, which, you know, so the obvious choice. And uh, so I wanted to make sure that I did a, a side long shot. I wanted to see both of them and both of them entirely. I didn't want to have anybody's back. And I wanted it to be something that, you know, um, I think the most iconic. Give us one. I'm so did sorry. We, have for a second? we did have him for a moment. Uh, I mean, I I, I, I'll make me start at the beginning again, because it's very fun to hear about. Hmm. Uh, Jay, I am making Dave tell us all about the proposal and how he approached that glorious splash page, uh, which immediately memorable to so many of us of uh, Batman Pop of the Question. Awesome. Can you hear us all right? Excellent. Yes, I can hear you. Go on, Dave. Sorry. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> all I was saying is, yeah, um, for the most part, I... I when I'm sitting down to draw a page, I really, I need to get a page done in that day. I'm not doing monthly comics right now, which is a bit of a relief. It gives me a little bit more time to kind of think about it. Uh, but drawing a monthly comic, I'm, I'm really thinking, okay, today. I, and, uh, but it, it, I drew it as a splash page. It was a splash page in the script. And I just wanted to make sure to get all of the action in as much as I possibly could. So it was a side long shot where you really see uh, both of them is entirely as possible so you didn't see somebody from behind and i didn't want to draw it from above or below i just wanted it to be as you know clear as possible it wasn't an action shot so it didn't drama i think i was thinking and then it's you know it's it's a bit of a a lot of times when i'm drawing those kinds of pages i am way too lazy to really lay things out i don't know how jay if you really lay things out heavily on pages that much I am such a lazy artist. I kind of, I just go right into it and it is a crapshoot. Sometimes it'll really work and sometimes I will fall on my face and I don't have time to fix it. So moving on, you know. <laughs> what, uh, have you ever considered sharing some of the, the sort of, if you ever have to abandon one part way through the sort of like, here's how it didn't work out kind of images? You know, actually, I think that'd be a really, I've got a drawer full. <laughs> so, you know, it would not reels. be so bad. No. <laughs> yeah. Even though I, I usually don't have time to do, especially there, I, yeah, I've got a lot. That would actually is a great idea to bring some of that stuff out and say, <laughs> yeah, here's the finished page. Here is the disaster that it almost was, you know, and if the deadline was a little <laughs> bit tighter, this is what you would have saw. <laughs> Uh, so Jay, while you were gone, I would say, uh, 
asking, I'm just curious, when Dave, you had started working, get, get, developed the six month boot camp uh, for Jay, did you already know that you might be interested in sort of passing on your skills or is that something you discovered at that point? And how did that lead into your extremely cool YouTube channel full of tutorials and live draws? Uh, okay, well, I knew that I liked teaching. When I was at uh, starting uh, for seven years, I worked at uh, Top Cow Productions came in as a young artist, uh, the older artist there, Brandon Peterson was there, uh, Mark Silvestri, obviously, Billy Tan was there, uh, and I would learned so much from them, and uh, I've enjoyed trying to teach some of the young artists there. Um, and so I, I got a taste of it to, uh, then, and then I, I've taught a, a few other artists also, um, Johnny Desjardins, who's done a lot of stuff for uh, Dynamite and uh, a bunch of other com uh, uh, companies, and he's, he's doing great. Um, and yeah, with Jay, I could see that he, you can see when somebody just has like a, a spark in their work that, and that's what made me want to help. Um, but I still didn't expect Jay to, you know, uh, be as successful as he is. I don't know if I would have reconsidered, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know well, what I was thinking. I'll, I'll say this about Dave. Like Dave is an excellent teacher. And the reason why Dave is such a good teacher is because he's, he's honest. He's brutally honest. I, I can't do, I can't do that. When, when somebody shows me their portfolio, like I want to, I, I can't bring myself to like really just, you know, get like just really critique it and dave can do that he's got he's good but the thing about dave is he can critique it but he also knows how to fix it mm. and that that's a different like i can look at something i can go yeah this looks off but not sometimes it's like i don't really know 100 percent how to explain it to the person to how to fix it whereas dave can look at it and even the slightest thing he can look at and go you know what this is off this is wrong but this is how you you go about fixing it change this shape or change the, your, you know, the lighting is inconsistent here. And so he's, he's really good at that. And that's why he's a great teacher is because he has that honesty of just, and, and you, one thing like you have to kind of learn in this industry is uh, getting a thick skin because, you know, you're getting uh, editors, not so much. some editors uh, I found in the early in my career, they were, they critiqued me heavily and that was great because it helped me to, kind of learn and get better now they don't they don't say too much about it uh some editors will but uh you know you got to have a thick skin even you know just from fans online who like to nitpick every little thing about your work if you drew something wrong or uh but having a, a thick skin is is something good and and dave kind of taught me that too uh by critiquing my he taught me how to take a critique and you know not allow it to be personal but instead you know, see where, see where I was going wrong and then showed me how to fix it. And, you know, that's a sign of a great, of a great teacher. And that's something that not everybody has that ability and that skill. Like I, like I said, I find I don't have that skill, not, you know, um, not like that. So uh, all you young artists out there, like uh, you need to follow Dave on YouTube because the videos that he's putting out, like I mentioned this before, those are the things, the same thing that I, I did. I have, I have my box of, of stuff that uh, I did through Dave's boot camp. I still have that box of, of art here and it's all the same stuff that he's posting online. The only thing that you're not maybe getting is the one-on-one -on -one that I got, which was really good. Cause I was able to, he was able to fix my, the problems with my artwork right away. And so um, that was really good and helped speed up the process. But uh, he's got a wealth of of incredible um, tutorials and stuff online and follow those, go through them and, and watch the videos and stop them and try to draw the things that Dave's doing and pra and do it over and over and over again, fill up pages and pages of heads and, and feet and legs and, and all the things that he's showing. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I'm sure Dave probably would, think about it like this way too but like you're trying to build a foundation when you're when you're drawing so it's like building a house you got to lay down a strong foundation to then build the walls and put the paint on and all those other things and the decorations and uh in order to do that with art you have to build that strong foundation and then put on the the fancier stuff the detail the rendering the shadow and all that kind of stuff 
Um, so uh, he's he's giving a lot of people a great uh, a great uh, uh, you know no, wealth of no, his knowledge of art is being put on YouTube and doing his live streams. Like I, I tune into Dave's live streams. I I sneak in there whenever Wait, he's what? doing them. Yeah, I will. I, 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 no, well, I feel I feel weird about doing that. But uh, oh. but I I'll come and spy on you and see what you guys are you and Meredith are talking about <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah and I'll sometimes I'll watch them the next day too like when I'm working or something I'll just put them on and I, I still I still learn a lot from watching Dave draw. Well, Jay, thank you. It's very nice of you to say. <laughs> And certainly none of us can argue with the results uh, because you are creating incredible work. And I believe that brings us to the portion where we are opening the floor for questions. I already saw a great one come in from Dennis. There we go. Uh, for Jason, apparently Jeff Johns recently confirmed a three Jokers sequel in the works. What can you say about the project without giving it away? <laughs> well, I can say that we've had a story kind of figured out for a while. Uh, but we haven't actually officially started on anything. Um, I'm actually working on something totally different right now that is a non-DC project, but I can't Ooh. say anything about that. Um, so that that little thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be kind of doing both books at the same time. Um, and uh, But uh, we, we haven't actually started uh, this, this whole Three Jokers sequel thing. We know what we we have a story we would like to tell, but it just everything kind of has to line up and and work out. But uh, there's actually like like Jeff and I actually have like many different stories that that we would like to tell. Like we have like a whole range of stories that could come out of the ending of Three Jokers. Are we ever going to tell them? I don't know. <laughs> uh, to be totally honest with you, I don't know. Um, uh, you know, so we'll we'll see. We, we kind of, it's like, the one thing I've really been struggling with is I feel like, I feel like Three Jokers was my, f like my final sort of Batman project. Like, I, I feel like I've, I've done that. I've, I've worked on, I've worked on DC stuff the last eight, nine years of my life. And I feel like this is this is a perfect time for a change and to try and to take a chance and take some chances in my career and try something different and do some different things with Jeff. And so um, I don't know. It's it's uh, you 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 want you want to have the passion for the project that you're working on and the one that I'm drawing like I've been drawing like the last like week or so. I've just I'm just so fired up about. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think we'll we'll see how the sales go with the hardcover, and maybe that'll that'll motivate us to, <laughs> to, to jump. That light in. a certain kind of fire. <laughs> yeah. I have a question from Artsy Designs for Dave. How did you come up with the concept for the Dark Knights Death Metal Five cover that you did? Um. Hi, Artsy. Good to see you here. Uh, actually, I've seen a bunch of people from. Uh... The stream that we do on Monday. So thank you guys all for showing up. Kenny Wang's here, one mighty R. Uh so yeah, the Art Are Jedi's they here. Block? Am I getting that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need a shirt, you know. Um I knew that I wanted Batman on the motorcycle. The minute that I saw Greg Capullo's design with the motorcycle, I thought, okay, he's gotta be out of you know, I couldn't not have that. And then uh, I just went with a triangular composition that's very Frazetta inspired. Uh, most of my covers, I would say, are pretty Frazetta inspired. It's, it's basically, you want the peak up and around the, the head level, and then everything comes in a triangle from that. It's a simple composition, but it always works, and that's kind of what I was thinking. But I really wanted to focus on the bike, so uh, I planned that first, and then everything else around it. Generally, when I draw a cover, I always have one thing that I really like, and then everything else has to fit around it if I can. So you work outwards from that focal point? Yes. Yeah, and then what ends up happening is I'll I'll draw my box in first, and then I'll draw my and then I'll have to erase the box and make it bigger, and you know. <laughs> That's when you talked about where you're like, I don't want a thumbnail list. Let's just go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny Wang asks just a question for Jason: How do you make your art unique? You were Dave's student, but your styles are very different. Well, you know, this is, a, okay, so here's a story. And uh, this goes back to when I was learning with Dave. I, you know, he had taught me very much how to draw 
in his style like like him and and in my mind it's still like that's kind of how like it makes the most sense to draw like the way that dave breaks down his shapes and his the way he, he his anatomy like he's he was very he has a very strong sense of shape and so you can so like to me in my mind it makes the most sense still to this day to draw in the way that Dave taught me how to draw. And I remember saying to him one day something like, you know, everybody's just going to say that I'm a, a David Finch clone. And, uh, and Dave said, that, that's good. He says, You're, you'll never go a day without work, you know, and it's true. It's true because Dave has a style that sells comic books. And he, and he told me another thing. He said, next time you go to a Comic-Con, go and look at who has the longest lines at the Comic-Con. It's guys like Jim Lee. It's Mark Silvestri. It's uh, uh, Todd McFarlane. And he said, you know, take little bits and pieces of those guys. Those are the, uh, of their art styles and, and slowly bring them into your work. And he, and he, he told me something like, you know, uh, back when he was working with Mark Silvestri, he, he had that, he was, he was kind of, uh, you know, cause he was taught by Mark Silvestri. He had his style and it took him a good five years to morph. In. And so he said the same thing. It's going to take you five, six years of drawing and, and bringing in other influences into your art and your art will slowly sort of change. And, uh, and that's something that I started to do at first. It was just, you had to get the projects done. So you relied on your base instincts of how Dave taught me how to draw. So I just, I went back to those fundamentals. And then after a while I started, you kind of, you start wanting to break out and, and do things a little different. So I would try little different things, um, you know, looking at uh, different artists. And What and, are some yeah. of those artists and influences you brought in? Um, I, I started looking at a lot of uh, uh, Ivan Reyes, uh, who was doing uh, Justice League and stuff at the time. I, I like a lot of those, um, something I, I can't do. A lot of the Brazilian artists have this very natural and organic style of, you know, their muscles. And I tried to start bringing some of that in, especially when I was doing Justice League. And uh, Gary Frank is another one I really enjoy uh, his style and his rendering and and then with Three Jokers, there was a lot of Brian Boland I was bringing in. I was really paying attention to Brian Boland's line work. And and uh, now with the stuff I'm doing right now, I'm going right back to uh, to Travis Charest, who Dave had lent me the, these Travis Charest Space Girl comic uh, that he does. It's a little web comic, and you can find it on his website. And I so I've been going back to that and really looking at how he's using his lines and and so I'm trying to bring a little bit of that into my, my current, this current project that I'm doing, because I feel like it fits. And so, um, yeah, it's just something that I think over time, you start to bring in different influences and, and different artists. And I think Dave, maybe Dave could talk a bit about this too, but I even find that depending on the project, I'll, I'll kind of go one way or I'll go a different way. You know, like maybe if you were, if I was doing maybe a more of a horror comic, maybe I would look at more like Mike Mignola and 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 kind of go in that direction maybe a little bit more with the shadows and how he does it but whereas if i'm doing superman maybe i'll go and i'll look at uh, uh, i don't know I, I can't think of uh, super, uh superman stuff right now like a different artist but maybe i would look at a different artist uh, gary frank for, kurt swan yeah kurt i gary was gonna frank, say gary like frank. Not on superman. yeah gary frank there's a lot of gary frank uh awesome superman stuff so uh, even Jim Lee did, did some great Superman yeah. stuff. So, you know, you kind of look towards those different influences and try to bring them in. I don't know, Dave, if you want to talk about that a little bit too. Yeah, I think it's true. I have to admit, I never think of it in terms of um, I'm going to angle in a particular direction and look at artists in order to do that. But I, I always think uh, what artists, really, and I've got a huge collection of books. You can You can see the corner of my bookshelf. I've got stacks and uh yeah different artists do different things well and i really try to pick up from that as much as i can so if i'm doing something that's more like uh you know justice league or avengers i'm looking at a lot of carlos pacheco especially i'm a huge huge mm. fan he's got the greatest like you know claw hands and, and just great multi-figure compositions and then yeah kelly jones or mike mcnola or um you know it's a long list uh tim sale for batman you know that kind of stuff and and just looking at that work it, it starts to angle the work in a direction so yeah i think the part the projects you take actually influence who you are as an artist too you know 
Well, like when I was doing the Swamp Thing winter special, I was looking at a lot of Bernie Wrightson, uh, but I was also going back and looking at a lot of Stefan Bissett. You know, mm-hmm. and I really liked that Alan. I was trying to bring in a little of that Alan Moore-esque looking Swamp Thing and, instead of yep. more of the Bernie Swamp Thing. But like, I, I was really just kind of use those. I use it as an excuse to kind of just try something a little bit different and try to see if maybe by bringing in something that that artist does stylistically, maybe maybe it will actually change my art and change the way I, I approach something, right? Um Yep. I, I do have to point, I'm so glad you brought up your Swamp Thing story because I do also think it's fantastic that you won the same Eisner Award two years apart for short stories with Tom King. Huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> the Talk funny. of the Saints uh, came, I believe, two years after Good Boy. Uh, did either of you have uh, major lessons or, or memories of working on those short stories, which is a very different challenge? Um. Well... I, I actually like the short story if it's a good all around script because it's you can just you can get in and you you can work really hard on that story and then it's done and it it it's like a um you know, I, I kind of actually wish that the Swamp Thing that we did was a little longer. I, I had originally pitched it as like I wanted to do like a four part series and DC said, No, let's let's just do a one shot, but uh, I was just very thankful that they were they wanted us to, they were going to give us that opportunity. But uh, um, I, I, I enjoy doing that. I enjoy comics that are uh, self-contained and mm. something that you can just pick up, read it, and you don't have to read 50 other issues to figure out what's going on. It was the same thing with three jokers. We wanted it to be self-contained. It starts on page one and it ends on page 144 or whatever, how many pages it is. Uh, that's how it's supposed to be. And I, I enjoy that kind of, that kind of story storytelling. Dave, how did you, uh, do you still have people bringing up good boy? Yes, I still see it. Um, for my part, I thought it was a great story and I thought it was worth drawing, you know, so <laughs> I enjoyed it in that sense, but it, it was, uh, all about a dog. I love dogs. I've got two, you know, and, but they're hard to draw, especially, <laughs> uh, I just hadn't done it. I've been trying to work on that lately and work on animals, I'm still struggling. But yeah, so every shot of the dog, I was having to go in and find reference. And it's one thing to find reference for how a character looks. It's another thing to find reference and then have to methodically copy it, which I really was doing. So it made it tough, but it was it was such a good story. It was worth it. But yeah, it was a tough job. <laughs> Well, we appreciate that you got it out there because it is a delightful story and very seasonally appropriate, folks. This is the the winter special and the Batman annual. Both of them uh, in different ways speak to the season. Um, But I am monopolizing y'all and we have a lot more great questions. So thank you, Chad, for keeping those coming. Art9 asks, David Finch, are you going to do something with Joe Wings again in the future? And what could it be? Um, I certainly would not say no. Absolutely. And I, I haven't talked to Joe in... Uh, a year, probably, maybe even more. Time flies. Um, but he's a phenomenal inker. He always has been, and he still is. And I'm always happy to work with him. Uh, so, yeah, I, I could, I could definitely see. He's got. Um, I, I love inkers that use a, a brush, uh, like Danny Mickey, um, Scott Williams. And they use a range of tools. So I think of them as brush inkers. It's probably simplifying it. And then there are inkers that I think of as quill inkers. And again, they use a range, but uh, Joe Quill Wings inkers. Quill? It's like a, it's a crow quill. Huh. Do you know what I mean? Let me show you what I mean. It's one of these. <laughs> and then you dip it in the ink like you got. So yeah, crow quill. And uh, it's a hard tip. And they're very unforgiving to work with. But if you're good with them, they, they produce a great line. So uh, yeah, Joe Weems is, is a great crow quill inker, uh, and it gives him a look that you really don't see nowadays as much. I, I really like it. I think I saw a great question coming in about routine. Uh, when starting to draw for the day, do you just, this is from the Art Jedi, uh, do you just jump straight into it, or do you do warm-ups, like drawing cubes and cylinders in 3D space? Jason, do you? I get up. I I grab my breakfast, I come downstairs and I just immediately just jump into whatever <laughs> I was working on the, the day before. I don't really do warm ups. I don't do cool downs or anything. Like if it's as soon as my wife calls for supper, I, everything's down and I'm upstairs and I don't really think about it for the rest of the day, uh, for the rest of the night. But uh, 
Um, I, my schedule, I have kind of a weird way of doing my work. Like when I'm doing a monthly book and I got to get a page done every day, like I kind of, I, the way I kind of work on the pages, it always seems to end up where I'm finishing one, the previous day's page at around noon, one o'clock, and then starting a new page at around noon or one o'clock, working on it till about five, five thirty-six, and then and finishing it up the next day from, you know, eight o'clock till one o'clock. And I kind of go like that. So I'm kind of, uh, uh, able in the morning to do, I do all the hard stuff from that page in the morning. And then, in, and, uh, 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 I kind of have the, that's when you have the most energy. And then when I start my next page, I sort of, uh, uh in the mid afternoon, I kind of just do a couple of easy close up stuff like that, just to kind of wind down. But with three jokers and with the stuff I'm doing now, there's no deadline. So like I'm sometimes spending like two, three days on a page. And so it kind of just, it just kind of that schedule kind of all falls apart, but the uh, rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. But it shows in the work, the extra time you can really see it in the pages. Yeah. I think, I think I just come to the point where I just want to be happy and content with the stuff I'm drawn and I'm not, like I could do a monthly book if I wanted to. I was off. I've been offered everything under the sun, but I just don't want to do it anymore. I have a young family, and I want to. I want to. I'd rather do high quality art work and put out one or two really good books a year than to do ten rushed jobs that I mm-hmm. don't ever get to see my family. So uh, that's kind of how my balance is now, I guess. The sort of European model there. Uh, Dave, what, what is your daily routine? Do you warm up? I don't. Um, so really for, it just means drawing poorly for a little while, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Up. but you know, yeah, I've got an eraser, you know, I've got white out. So yeah. Uh, what I do try, cause I'm, I'm getting older and, uh, I do think you, I worry about when you do something for a long time and I've seen artists kind of go through this as you go along, the art starts to kind of suffer a little bit. It's like handwriting that, you know, you do it more and more and more and it gets harder and harder to read. And I don't want to let that happen. So uh, I look at different artists and I sketch from their work and try different things. And I, I try and I, I claim all the time, oh, I do that for half an hour a day. I don't. I do that probably half an hour a day for like three days and then I lose energy. I don't have time and I move on. And it's like another month before I do it again. But I do try to do that. Nice. nice. Do we have some more questions from chat? Uh, Dennis asks for both. Ooh, great question. What is your all-time favorite Batman story? Dark Victory for me. Why Dark Victory? Because I read it before Long Halloween, so I, I kind of read it out of order. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing with yeah. me. Otherwise, I would say Long Halloween, I'm sure, but that's the first one I read, so it's you know special to me. I read Long Halloween first, so I can vouch that <laughs> they're both great. But yeah, um, that's that's kind of funny, yeah, because I, I I read Dark Victory as well first. But sometimes I still get them mixed up in my mind, like which yeah. parts come from which book. But I probably say I I probably say Long Halloween in mm-hmm. a lot. Uh, I uh, I, re- I recently reread both of them, and I think I liked Long Halloween better. But I think the art in Dark Victory was better. So. You know, I don't know. But uh, yeah, those are both great, really great Batman stories. Mm -hmm. What was it like, Jay, as you revisited some of these major influences, which you were remixing in a sense for Three Jokers? Anything to really stand out on going back to them for this purpose? Um, Yeah, it it was actually a lot of fun to do that. Uh, uh, our book was heavily influenced by killing jokes. So a lot of the stuff, a lot of the way that the scenes are and the sets and the, and the way I tried to lay out panels and, and um, tell the story was all kind of going back to Brian Bolland and the way that he was telling the story through the, through the artwork and the way that he would draw different set, uh, specifics in the settings and whatnot uh, backgrounds. And, and so I really went like that, went, went heavy into that. And I really was hoping that fans would pick up on that as they read it. Uh, but then there was other things too, like a lot of death in the family um, you know, some, some long Halloween stuff. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's fun to go back and play with that. And I'm a big fan of history and, and especially comic book history. And, uh, sometimes I think it's good to just go back and look at how things were done 
and you know try and try and bring that back into the 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 mindset of the comic book reader uh it's like listening to a uh it's like listening to a classic rock band kind of do a new album yeah it sounds like the classic stuff but it's also got a new twist to it as well and so uh um you know that's that's just it was a lot of fun to do that is there anything coming up that I know you can't necessarily tease things, but that you want people to know to look out for for either uh, Jason or Dave? Well, I just noticed that Amy Dowlin says Fabok and Finch autograph. Sorry, Fabok. I do it all the time. I still do it. How many years has it been? I can't help it. <laughs> Fabok and Finch autograph Black Friday prints on sale at mainframecomiccon.com. So, yeah, we've got that. And, uh, yeah, please check them out and, you know, Support the cause. We really appreciate all of your support and, you know, some nice artwork. For sure. Couldn't have said that better myself. Thank you so much uh, for being part of this Bat Friday panel. Do you have any final Batman-esque thoughts that you want to share with our audience or, or secrets you want to spill before they take our cameras away? <laughs> Batman-esque thoughts. I want to hear you go first. <laughs> oh, no. Don't put me on the spot. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, Bat Batman's, uh, Batman's really fun to draw. I'm, I, like I said, I, I hopefully will do some more in the future. Uh, I'd love to see Dave get back on a Batman book or do a mini series or do something. I would love to see, you know, Dave's one of my favorite Batman artists and, and, uh, I, pour over all the work that I still have is the dark Knight stuff all here on my side table that I use for uh, flipping through to get ideas and whatnot. So I'd love to see Dave back on some Batman and, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's, it's always fun to re to visit that character and hopefully both of us can do it in the future. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to get the chance again. I just did another Batman cover with um, the red hood, which was, <laughs> A lot of fun. He's got a new costume with like a hood, actually, <laughs> you know, so. Mm. Um, but yeah, I would love to be able to do a, a, a Batman, if not run, certainly a story again. And, you know, hopefully that will work out. And yeah, when you were saying, Jay, that you did Batman, you think it's your final statement on Batman, maybe I thought, no, no, you can't let it go that easy. <laughs> well, I, was, I was just even thinking right now, I was like, you know, like Batman's probably the only character that I would that you could, you don't ever really get tired of. So, yeah. you know, like if you could, you might step away for a while, but then like, if you, if you were asked yeah. to do another Batman story and you really thought, yeah, this is going to be a good story. And uh, you know, I'm going to really enjoy drawing this. I think, you know, you would be just pumped up to jump back in. It doesn't take much with Batman to get you excited. You just, you know, you go open up a couple of Batman comics, watch, watch uh, Batman 89, and then you're ready to go again. So yep. he's, he's probably one of the only characters like that, you know, where you would just get fired up to draw him again. Yeah. You know, absolutely. All right. uh, I like again, we're saying thanks a lot, you guys, and happy Thanksgiving, even though Canadian Thanksgiving was weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> we are grateful <laughs> that you could be here. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with us. Please get those prints. Uh, check out the rest of the evening, and thank you so much. Awesome. Hi. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much for having us. It was uh, it was good. It was good to see you, too, Jay. It's been yeah, too you long. too. <laughs> well, it's yeah. only 30 minutes away, man. Good drive on. I know. Hi. Yeah. You know well, what? We just, we just had a baby. So I was going to go and visit Dave a couple weeks ago. Uh, we had talked about doing a little thing together, a little project. Uh, we still together, need to but, do it. But then like my, we had like a like baby came a couple weeks early. So congratulations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So maybe in six months. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that well, baby we'll just bring, we'll, really wanted to be born in 2020. Yeah, we'll bring over the baby. Meredith would love to. There you go. Love to oh yeah, <laughs> we'll have to get him back. Yeah. <laughs> well, Amy, Jay, Dave, this was a, I'm I'm so upset that this this hour is over. It literally flew by. Everybody in the comment section, thank you so much for your questions. Thank you so much for your comments. This was phenomenal. We can't wait to have you both and all three of you back uh, for the next mainframe really soon in 2021. So thanks a lot for Absolutely. being here, guys. And Amy, awesome. thank you so much. For, 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 for me to come back. All right, guys, we had a lot more Bat Friday stuff. I just love that name. I feel like we invented a holiday this year. This is wonderful. Uh, we got a lot more great stuff uh, coming up right now. Head on over to mainframecomiccon.com. The Batman Catwoman panel is about to start with Clay Man 
and Tom King. So click on that over at mainframecomiccon.com and we'll see you guys uh, later. Thanks again, Dave, Jay, and Amy. Have a fantastic Thanksgiving weekend. You too. Bye. Thank you. You too. Black Friday comic book deals are now available at mainframecomiccon.com. Like this David Finch exclusive variant starting at only $30. Limited edition prints autographed and shipped to you from only 45 bucks. Mail-in signatures and CGC grading available for your personal comic book collection. And impossible to find comic book posters all signed by the top names at DC. This is a limited time offer, so head on over to mainframecomiccon.com and pick up yours today.